So Gordon Shedden is going to start this first race eighth on the grid. Jason Plato is going to start 11th. Uh, so much expectation in this as the grid is now cleared. And uh, very shortly, the cars will be making their way onto the formation lap before the cars leave the grid. Let's quickly try and have a word with Jade Edwards, who we're delighted to say is in for a full season. Jade, how exciting is this, then, knowing that you've got a whole season ahead of you? Yeah, this is the, uh, the aim I, I went for when I did the Silverstone race last year. Um, and I'm delighted to be in a great car, great team, and to be doing a full year. And it was a good qualifying yesterday, apart from a slight off, but, you know, changeable conditions. There you are in, in mid-grid, ready to go. So tell us about yesterday, just quickly. Yeah, very positive day overall. Um, the, the, the pace on the wet tyres was very good. Um, I was inside the top 10 and I just went to slicks a bit late. And that's probably just a, a showing of my experience in the championship. I just need to be a little bit braver on those slicks in the wet conditions. Jay, good luck for race one. Thanks. So, Jade Edwards, third generation racer. Uh, Jim Jr., her father, here because it is his team, a set of courses that you see in the Ginetta Junior Championship, and her grandfather, Jim Sr., watching at home with uh, Jade's uncle and her nan. So, uh, lots of family support as the cars then leave the grid. A chance to get some warmth into the Goodyear rubber in readiness for this first race of the Quickfit British Touring Car Championship for 2021. Ash Sutton, the driver who is going to start on pole position in the Infinity. Josh Cook lining up with him at the front of the grid. It's a dry road now. They've had limited dry running all weekend. Ash Sutton starts on pole position. Josh Cook, the man alongside in the second row, Colin Turkington and Tom Ingram, with Rory Butcher and Tom Oliphant on the third row. Jake Hill's going to be a man to watch starting on the inside of row four. So is the man alongside him, that's Gordon Shedham. And then on the fifth row of the grid, there's Ollie Jackson, double winner last year. Chris Smiley qualifying well in the Hyundai ahead of Jason Plato. And the recovery, the returning uh, Dan Kamish in for this weekend alone, at least. Carl Bordley is next, going well in qualifying ahead of Adam Morgan, Jack Goff, and then another returnee, that's Dan Robotham in the second of the Team Dynamics Hondas. Next is Jade Edwards and then it's Stephen Jelly. Aaron Taylor-Smith comes back to the championship to start on row 10. Tom Chilton had a clutch issue in the free practice session yesterday. He's next ahead of Aidan Moffat and Dan Lloyd. Sam Osborne starts on row 12 alongside his teammate Andy Neat. Rick Parfitt's on the 13th row, the only rookie on the grid. He had an oil leak in qualifying. Sam Smelt back into the championship and lines up alongside. Another returner is Glyn Getty. He had an off in free practice one in the Cooper. He's 27th on the grid with Jack Butel next, and it's Nicholas Hamilton who rounds out the grid. It's another quality lineup. Picking a winner, Tim, is going to be very hard indeed. It is, but uh, I noticed uh, Ash Sutton going really hard on that outlap through the complex. He's trying to build as much temperature into those hard Goodyear tyres that everybody's on for this race because he wants to get off and try and get up the road as soon as possible. So there is the double champion, the reigning champion, Ash Sutton, the Laser Tools Racing Infinity Q50, and his good mate Josh Cook lining up with him at the front of the grid. Now, don't forget, Josh has had a win on each of the last four visits of the championship to Thruxton. It's his home circuit, the car is well suited, uh, he instructs here, he loves this place. Uh, this, just also to make the point, is the first time Thruxton has had the opening event of the championship since 2010. Uh, Fabrizio Giovinardi twice and Stephen Kane once the winners that weekend so it's been a long long time but we're back for the first races at Thruxton and again we'll make the point for the last time no ballast everybody for this race weight free and on the same tyre it really is going to be fascinating but we'll see over the course of this race how much of a lottery qualifying was as the order starts to shuffle I'm still intrigued to see what Dan Camish can do from 12th on the grid I mean, in terms of pace, he should be able to get up there to the podium. And maybe only at the end of the season will we know what consequence his involvement this weekend has had, because he can be taking points away from people that ultimately will be fighting for a championship. We might be saying in October, yeah, but if Kamish hadn't been at Thruxton, then X would have scored more points for another place. If so, buts, I know. But, you know, Kamish on the grid is great news. I just wish he was here for the whole season. Yeah, it's a bit of a full Monty appearance, isn't it? For <laughs> once and one time only. But uh, stepped in at the last minute just to replace the unfortunate Michael Kreese, who's split with the team. But uh, uh, Kamish has a full... Um, Porsche Carrera Cup programme and a bit of a Super Cup programme, yeah. so this will be a one-off, but he can certainly do some damage and score some points, and I don't think his grid position is indicative as he, of his race pace. I would uh, go along with that as the cars make their way onto the grid. Just before we go racing, uh, a word about another uh, couple of people lost, sadly, from the British Touring Car Championship paddock. One, Brian Jones, the legendary Brands Hatch commentator, who was the first uh, circuit commentator appointed by Alan Gow in the 1990s. Brian was a, a lovely man who we lost on the 1st of January.
January. And Chris Craft, who was an overall race winner uh, in the championship, double outright winner. He had 22 class wins, raced from Lotus Cortinas to Ford Anglias to uh, Ford Escorts to Ford Capris, part of Gordon Spice's team. Uh, he succumbed to dementia, sadly, a few weeks ago. He too is much. Round one of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship about to get underway. Lights to go out, good start by the rear wheel drive Infinity and also, as you'd expect, the BMW of Colin Turkington who jumps ahead of Josh Cook on the way up towards Allard for the first time. And it is Sutton then who leads the way. Up into fourth place is Tom Ingram and he's looking for a way to try to gain ground as they make the run towards the complex for the first time. It's side by side for second as Cook tries to go around the outside into Campbell. There's a bit of a rub and Sutton spins on cold tyres. Around goes the leader, around goes the champion and that puts Josh Cook into the lead of the race. Unbelievable, the champion spins at the first right hand corner, just too much power on two cold tyres. Josh Cook, a fundamental move, a crucial move to get through into the lead pass. Turkington. So, drama as anticipated. Cook also on cold rubber, of course, is still trying to hang on in there for the race lead because he's got Turkington. He's got Ingram queued up behind him. Ingram looks to the inside line to try to go second. He's got the inside line as they dive down towards Church and through goes Ingram up into second place. The Hyundai, remember, his new mount he's never had. Uh, that car has never had a win. And that's Gordon Shedden who's off the road, we understand. The safety car is out. So, Cook leads the way. Ingram is up to second. And that is Oliphant who is off the road. They're struggling, it seems, with a cold road. Yeah, cold tyres affecting the rear-wheel drive cars. The front-wheel drive cars get their tyres up to temperature quicker, remember. And uh, an off wide was Turkington, and Oliphant off as well, under the safety car. And uh, Ingram is up to second place with that move into church. Absolutely. So, I was trying to make the point, the Hyundai and indeed the team accelerate, never having had a win. Ingram is there in second place. That's the recovered Oliphant. Uh, and we'll piece it all together in a moment to see who has gone off and where. But Gordon Shedden, you would not expect to be off the road on the first lap. You wouldn't expect Ash Sutton to have a spin either. 2021 BTCC <laughs> has lived up to its usual uh, 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 reputation on lap one. That's Chris Smiley. Yeah. But yeah, drama on lap one. Absolutely. So there's barrier damage. There are two cars off the road, as you see. So Smiley and Gordon Shedden have had a tangle. So uh, Gordon Shedden's return to the championship is not a happy one, sadly. And uh, Ash Sutton will be able to play catch up. Well, he's gained a place at the expense of Tom Oliphant, but there'll be an awful lot of drivers with a little bit of a story to tell at the end of this. But I would not have put money on Ash having had a spin. I mean, you'd said on the green flag that how aggressive he was being to try and warm the tyres and he was still bitten. Yeah, and he made a perfect start. Uh, both the rear-wheel drive cars made great starts, him and Turkington, all look good. Let's watch out, he's got a comfortable little lead going in, and just watch, he gets on the power. Oh, no, he had a touch. He had a touch yeah. from Turkington. There was a little tap that sent him round, so apologies to Sutton, it wasn't his fault. I think it was a case of Turkey just couldn't stop the car in time and was trying not to let um, Cook go round the outside, and he just tagged the rear. Absolutely right. Now, this is Gordon Shedden's view right from the start of the race, so let's try and piece this one together, Tim. Yeah, flat out round... Oh, a little lift. Normally a flat off the start line round there, but an indicator again of cold tyres. Um, looking to make a move into the chicane, and Butcher gets past... Um, uh, oh, there goes Ash Sutton on the right. Now we're coming to the final right-hand part of the chicane... of the C-grade part. Out onto the far section back, he's got Ollie Jackson, Jake Hill and Rory Butcher all in front of him. Up to Noble, the fast left-hander, first time you lean on the right-hand side. Oh, they get into a bit of a tank slapper and across the road, and he gets collected by Smiley as he's coming back across the road. That was just a little bit of checking up of the cars in front as they go round that fast left-hander. Oh, there you see it from the other side. That was Jason Plato's view. It was all happening ahead of him. Jason dodged that bullet, but that was a, a big hit between Chris Smiley and Gordon Shedden. Two crumpled cars. Safety car is out. And, of course, we've got to move those cars, and they'll need to sort out the tyre barrier damage there. So, uh, yes, Ash Sutton, it was contact with that little tag in the back. So, uh, as Colin Turkington tried to slow the car down, he tagged the back of the Infinity. Ash Sutton 
to an extent got away with that. He's at the back of the queue in 26th place now with the opportunity to gain ground on the restart as we are still under safety car conditions here at Thruxton. Josh Cook leads, Tom Ingram is second. Up into third has come Jake Hill. That was from seventh on the grid, remember. Colin Turkington is fourth, Rory Butcher fifth, Holly Jackson sixth, Jason Plato seventh, Dan Kamish is eighth, Stephen Jelly is ninth, and Carl Bordley rounds out the top ten. Yeah, the other thing to remember is that because um, free practice was wet yesterday, qualifying was wet right up until near the end, there's been no testing here, so none of these drivers have done a real lap in anger on slicks. So there's a, it's a venture into the unknown. They're trying to feel the limit. If it was a normal day, they'd have all got up to speed. Yeah. But certainly, when you come to that fast left-hander where we saw Shed go off, you're leaning on the right rear, which is the coldest tyre on the tyre of the car for the first time. So inevitably, without some experience, there's a, there's a difference in how quick you think you can go through there. And the car's just checking up, call Shed now. Indeed so, and that means that the uh, Team Dynamics operation, the, as it now is, uh, Halfords racing with Cataclean squad will have to do a lot of work. We'll see the full extent of that damage in a moment as the car is lifted. The same is true over at Accelerate, the uh, team that runs the uh, Ginsters Accelerate with trade prize cars.com, Hyundai, to give it its full title, of Chris Smiley. And again, two people that had qualified in the top ten now with battered cars and Matt Neal thinking, I could have been in that battle, I could have been on that uh, grid, but these days uh, acting for the team. And uh, he says it's a sabbatical rather than a retirement, but uh, Matt will be now thinking, right, how quickly can we get the car back? What's the damage and how can we get it right for race two? Yeah, there's a, another view of the, the Sutton. Now, you, you do take this first right-hander quite slowly, but look, Turkington's defending from, um, uh, from Cook and just gets the slightest tap on the rear, and at that point, it's enough to turn the rear-wheel car around. So, Ash Sutton to the back of the pack. Let's have a, another look at the Shed and Smiley incident. Look yeah. on the left of the screen. Butcher had a bit of a slide there, which checked up um, Shedden. He Ooh. then got a tank slapper, came across the road and got collected by Smiley. Mm. So this is Jason Plato's view again. That is Smiley head. So look to the right. You'll see Gordon Shedden in a moment come spearing across the road after that little tangle with the Ford. Bang, there's Smiley. Yeah, Jason had the presence of mind to get out of the throttle mm. nice and early and avoid that one. And he picked up a couple of easy places there. This will help Ash Sutton now as well from his spin because he'll be back on the tail of the crocodile. Mm. Um, the tires will be warm. We'll be looking for a Sutton charge when we get back to green flag conditions. So there is Ash Sutton. And he will be 26th on the restart. So the safety car stays on track for the moment. Now, Ollie Jackson has pitted. Uh, I was just trying to work out why he was being shown on the timing screen as third and was tumbling down our timing tower. He had made a pit stop, that's why. So possibly as a result of the damage with uh, the Gordon Shed and Tangle. So he's made the pit stop. He is back on track, but of course, will be able to stay on the lead lap, which is crucial. Yeah, absolutely. He probably maybe picked up a puncture or something. So race order, Cook Ingram. It was Jackson third because by coming into the pit lane, he was able to uh, go a little bit quicker and uh, dart ahead of the traffic. But he will drop down the order, putting Jake Hill back into third, Turkington fourth, Butcher fifth, and Jason Plato in sixth. And of course, what we're looking for is when the uh, lights go out atop the safety car to get racing back underway. Let's try and uh, hear from Team Dynamics. Matt Neal in the pit lane is with Louise. Matt, this is a very strange situation for you, isn't it? Standing watching a race in, in civvies. How's it feeling? A uh, little frustrating, I was into it, but then um, obviously seeing Flash go out on the first lap is even more frustrating. So uh, we've still got Robo in there and um, you know, I think he's running all right, he's stayed out of trouble the first lap, so a long weekend ahead. What was your take on that, on that situation with, with Gordon? I mean, uh, nobody's run here on dry tyres, have they? We haven't had any dry running at all, so tricky. Tricky for everybody, heading out for the first time on dry tyres. Yeah, it's a shame. It would have been a great opportunity for, for Gordon for some good results. I mean, there was a few casualties on that first lap, so we could have picked up some strong points, but um, those are the cards we've been dealt now, so we've got to get on with it. What was your take on the incident? Uh, 
first of all, I just held my head in my, head in my hands with Flash. But then we don't know, we did, uh, did Ollie just back out in the middle of the corner. And then, you know, it's so quick through there. It's sixth gear. So I think it's almost six of one, half a dozen of the other. Cheers, Matt. Thanks. Well, Team Dynamics has uh, a repair job to do. So does Accelerate. There you can see the damage on both sides to Chris Miley's car. So big disappointment for two drivers that had qualified well. But blimey, um, we're back, everybody. What a start to the race. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking as the cars sat on the grid for race one, how immaculate they all were. <laughs> you know, not a mark on any of them. And of course, you know, now the rebuild start between races and that will carry on all year. The Very sellers true. of Tank Tape will do great guns, I can tell you, in this paddock. Yes, exactly. They've uh, not been used for a, a, a month or so, extra to what they were anticipating. But, yes, yeah, sales will now soar. Right, lights are still on the top of the safety car as down it comes into the chicane. And uh, Josh Cook then versus Tom Ingram in the same colour scheme that you're familiar with, adorning Tom's car. But the Hyundai, he's, as we keep saying, gone to accelerate over the winter months. And the Hyundai, a little bit longer than the Corolla, so he says it's heading back towards the old Avensis in, in the floor plan, which, of course, was a car that took him to second place in the championship, going back a few seasons. But uh, could this be the day, could this be the race on which Hyundai gets its first British Touring Car Championship victory? And, of course, the Accelerate team, which you kind of forget hasn't been on the grid for more than a couple of seasons. I mean, they've made a big impact in a short space of time. Yeah, they have. I mean, a really committed team doing yep. an excellent job um, running four cars and having a, a race winner and potential champion in Ingram in the mm. car is a really step forward. They're a very serious team. So congratulations to Justina, Williams and the rest of the crew. Yeah, the redoubtable Marvin Humphreys overseeing operations as well. He keeps trying to retire, he says, and he gets coerced back for another season. Safety car in this time now. We are on lap six of the race. The point being, it's been a, a lengthy safety car period, and they still haven't really had much to opportunity to get tyre temps. No, I mean, they've got a bit more temperature now, at least even them up a little bit, mm. but it just looked like the BMWs were struggling as well, didn't it? We saw Turkington running very wide on the exit of Church, and then Oliphant off completely. Yeah. Um, they'll be hoping they've got a bit more uh, temperature in the tyres now, uh, ready to go racing. But... Uh, it is a. It has traditionally been a front-wheel drive circuit, but in recent years the rear-wheel drives have come back into into play. But uh, it's going to be a factor of tyre temperature and uh, and the length of the race, which of course has effectively been shortened in terms of race laps. That's right. And don't forget that this result sorts out your grid for race two. So the better you can recover, and we single out here the likes of Ash Sutton and Tom Oliphant, the better your grid position is uh, for that second race. Jade Edwards, whom we spoke to on the grid before the race, is currently in 18th place. Matt Neal touched on uh, Dan Robottom in the second of the uh, Dynamics Hondas. He is in 12th spot at the moment, returning to the championship. Not sure if you mentioned it, but Stephen Jelly, the, the highest improver, up 10 places to uh, eighth place. So uh, Jelly was the biggest mover and gainer of those first few laps. He, of course, in the third of the BMWs, but uh, 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 now running second of the BMWs on the road. We're getting ready to restart. I think Cook, he has pushed it and gone. But Ingram is trying to go with him then as the safety car will head into the pit lane. We will go racing again then this time as they burst out of the chicane. Now remember, the timing line is down at Allard, not coming out of the chicane, so they can't overtake, they can't attack yet, but now they can as they go down towards the first corner. The green flags fly, we are racing again. Cook versus Ingram, 0.222 of a second between them. They are nose to tail on the run up to the complex. Hill runs third. Fourth is Turkington, Ingram goes one side and then the other, up towards Campbell on the outside line. The inside for Cobb, not quite available to him. It is just Josh Cook ahead as we go racing once more. But Ingram's looking really feisty and aggressive, isn't he, already? As I said, double winner here last year. He wants to bounce back. There's Robottom getting up the inside of Jack Goff. With Sutton already charging. Three abreast coming out there. Sutton's going to go round the outside into Allard. He'll brave it out into Noble, sorry. I think that's Moffat, is it not? Because Sutton is still trying to charge his way through. We've got three of the laser tools and finishes to worry about this year. There's Carl Bordley in the first of them. It is Aidan Moffat there, look, on the tail of Dan Robottom. And Ash Sutton on the restart was down in 25th place with work to do, as you see there. BMW on the inside. Adam Morgan now go ahead of Carl Bordley. So he moves himself up into ninth place. 
race does Adam Morgan. Runs wide and Robo comes up to have a go then and he gains his place into the top ten on the run up Woodham Hill now. Adam Morgan, another driver, switching to uh, a different car and a different platform. Front-wheel drive Mercedes no more. Now rear-wheel drive BMW. Then you've got Robottom, there is Bordley, there is Moffat, there is Chilton, there is Jack Goff in the new Cooper game. Well, great battle as they come over the line. Fastest lap has been done by Turkington as Cook leads the way by four tenths of a second. But look at this mega battle diving down towards Allard. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It was Moffat on a charge and he passed uh, his new teammate Bordley and looking really strong actually. In fact, that's a and that's a brand new car that Moffat's got underneath him. Right, this is Ash Sutton's on board. He's on the back of Oliphant. That's Sam Smelt ahead, and there's a slowing Nicholas Hamilton. They all have to dodge around, heading up to the complex. Sutton on the outside. Now the inside. Oliphant's ahead of him. Sutton will line up for the outside line here at Cobb, which is the inside line for Seagrave. Is this the job done? Yeah, it is. Through he goes. Yeah, through he goes, but Oliphant got in front of him, hadn't he? Because on the restart, Oliphant was behind. So That's right. They're having a great scrap, those two coming through. And there's Oli Jackson after his pit stop to sort out the damage. He, too, is trying to work his way back into contention. Right, Cook leads, and he's just edging away ever so slightly from Tom Ingram in second place. Third is Jake Hill. Turkington is fourth. Rory Butcher, fifth there, looking the Toyota. It is Jason Plato, sixth. Dan Camish is seventh. And Stephen Jelly back at WSR is eighth. This is the battle for ninth. Adam Morgan on the inside line. On the outside line is Dan Robottom, who will break as late as he dares. Is he going to go all the way around the outside of his former teammate? Yes, he is. Is. Robottom goes through up into ninth place. That was a terrific pass. It's not easy to pass round the outside on the brakes into the chicane. So well done, Dan Robottom. A really good, clean pass. Yeah, there was talk, wasn't there, in the close season when it was announced he was driving for Dynamics. Just a few people say, why him? You know, Matt Neal retiring and Dan's touring car background haven't let his many decent results. As you see, Adam Morgan hit the curb and get sideways, but Robottom is proving that he deserves to be here. Yeah, and, and the Moffat charge carries on. I, mean, I wasn't wrong in thinking it was Sutton, because it's almost reminiscent of a Sutton charge, isn't That's it? Right. Great to see Aidan Moffat wringing the neck of that uh, um, infinity and really getting the hang of it. He's learned a lot from Sutton and is uh, really going forward. The, the Sicily BMWs actually have been struggling in testing to get their tyres up to temperature, so uh, we're seeing a bit of a, a repeat of that. Hamilton with grass all in the front bumper. Yeah. He's going to have to come in and have that taken out a little overheat. Yeah, just going back to Aidan Moffat, he's running 10th and he started 21st. That is a charge, I agree. That constitutes a charge. To the outside line here, Camish on Plato. This is for sixth place, but Jason hangs onto the position as they drop into the chicane. Just up the road ahead is Rory Butcher. Remember, we saw Nicholas Hamilton slowing at the start of the lap, coming out of Allard, so he'd had a, a moment potentially there and the car was overheating. Through goes Plato then, but it is Cook, Ingram, Hill, Turkington, Butcher ahead as they round Allard. The race will be 19 laps, as you see, extended because of the safety car period, but we're already on lap 10. Yeah, it's gone quickly, hasn't it? And uh, interesting to get Camish's views on uh, jumping in the BTC version of the uh, Honda because that, of course, has the Toker engine in it, not the Neil Brown Honda engine in it. And he felt it had perhaps a little bit more bottom end, but maybe not quite so much top end, but uh, certainly a strong motor, he felt. Well, he's doing the job for Josh Cook, isn't it? Who is now getting away from Ingram. The gap up to nine tenths of a second. Ash Sutton is 21st. Points for the top 15, remember? So he's striving to get closer and closer towards the front, and he's not done yet. Cook has also done the fastest lap of the race. Ingram absolutely on the ragged edge there. Yeah, he was indeed. I mean, in it if you ever get a chance to have a look at Ingram's on boards from Thruxton, there's some of the most exciting uh, footage you can see. And I'd certainly like to have seen his on board through church there because he had a big moment. And look, that's put Jake Hill right onto the back of him with Turkington, his wily self coming forward on the back of Hill. And so too, Plato, he's right on the back look of Rory Butcher, just getting away now from Dan Camish. So Plato's return to the championship. He's currently netting sixth. He could go one better than that as we work now. Lap 11 as they head now up towards the complex. Nicholas Hamilton has rejoined after his pit stop. He's just up the road ahead of this battle, as you see. Butcher and Plato, nose to tail. One of the many brand new cars on the grid is that of Jason Plato, and he's tucked right up behind here, the Toyota Corolla. I think the year off, ah, oh, Jelly going slowly. What a shame for him after that great start mm. to this race. 
um, can't identify what the problem is, but just going back to Plato, and we're on board with him now, I think that year off has done him a world of good. Um, it gave him a chance to reflect on why he goes racing, why he loves it, get his fire back up to come back, instead of just going through the motions, and uh, it looks to be that he's lost none of his form at all. Now, this is the fight for third place. It is Jake Hill versus Colin Turkington. The BMW as the race wears on. Looking a bit more comfortable, looking a bit more committed now as well. So can Turkington line up for a move at the chicane? The answer this time is no, but he's showing intent, isn't he? And you can see the way the gap is widening all the while. Cook to Ingram. Hill third, Turkington fourth. Now, the fifth look, it is Butcher. Then Plato. Camish has caught back up, even though Dan Cam is being warned about track limit offences. So three of them for fifth as they come across the line. Into eighth place. Now, there he is, Dan Robottom in the background. Ninth is Morgan, tenth is Moffat with the demise of Stephen Jelly. Yeah, it's an interesting group that coming together, and certainly Cookie's got him got himself uh, in a good position with a one and a half second lead and the fastest lap. Remember, there's an extra point for uh, fastest lap and for leading a lap of the race on top of the uh, championship points that, that he would get for, for winning this. 20 in all for the winner. And Sutton is in 17, so he's getting closer towards the points. And there you can see Jake Hill having to go defensive, of course, to keep at bay the BMW of Colin Turkington, third and fourth, these two. Not under attack, are they? Because Rory Butcher has got his hands absolutely full of trying to defend that fifth place from Plato and Camish. So through turns this fight for third position. Turkington looking to get onto the podium. Good drivers, we expected by Jake Hill. Motivates a team that's had some changes of personnel and ownership over the winter. This is Sutton going for 16th place now, up on the inside of Aaron Taylor-Smith. Job done. Job done, and uh, next uh, target will be Sam Osborne. And if he gets past Osborne, he'll be in the points as well. So uh, the Laser Tools Racing Infinity down towards the chicane then. The race leaders have just started lap 13. Josh Cook, there he is, is leading now by a second and a half, getting away all the while from Ingram. Hill hangs on to third place for the moment, under huge pressure, though. And that is Plato through on the inside of Butcher. That gives the Astra fifth place. Butcher tries to fight back. A little bit of a rub between them. Butcher gets the inside line for Seagrave and goes back through. Great racing. That's good racing, but where coming through now is Kamish, who takes both of them in one go. Two places gained for Dan Kamish. Great opportunistic move, that. So Butcher and Plato squabbling amongst themselves. Door was opened, Kamish needs no second invitation. Through he comes, he's got nothing to lose in all of this. He's only here for the weekend. Uh, he doesn't have to think about points, he just wants to go as well as he can. So Kamish gains two places and gets away, and this is how it all looked. Yeah, and on board, Butcher has been defending the inside, but on this, this occasion leaves a gap. Jason goes straight through, but overshoots just enough for Butcher to get round the outside of him through the middle part. It slows the two of them down on the exit. They rub a little, and Kamish says, thank you very much, <laughs> keeps his momentum up on the exit of Seagrave and passes both before the left-hander at Noble. So that is one BTC racing car in the lead, and another one up into fifth place. Uh, Dan Kamish, of course, having started 12th on the grid, so making good progress. Uh, Butcher is still busy defending from Plato. Trouble is that Kamish, having caught past and now pulling away, no longer part of that battle, and they can't really get back onto terms with him, seemingly, as on the 14th lap of 19 at Thruxton in this first round of the championship. Josh Cook leads still by a second and a half. There's another good fight going on in the background, too, as Dan Lloyd's on a mission up into 14th place. Uh, he started 26th. Second, he's been another driver making big strides forward here for third. Hill still under pressure though from Colin Turkington as they go out of Goodwood through Village up towards Church now. And in terms of pace, you can expect the BMW to keep its race pace up slightly better towards the end of this race if the balance goes away slightly um, from the uh, the Ford of, uh, of um, Jake Hill because he loses a bit of front tire grip. Then Turkington will mount an attack later in the race. I just want to give a, a hats off actually to Kamish because he didn't do any testing whatsoever before this meeting. So actually, this is his first dry laps on slicks in a touring car this year. The yeah, others have all yeah. done testing, media day, everything else. So hats off for him to get into grips with it so quickly. Yeah, he's doing a good job as you anticipate. It would be a, a real travesty if he didn't have another crack at the British Touring Car Championship. We know what a class act he is behind the wheel. As there you see Ash Sutton then wriggling his way through the chicane. So as he comes then to the timing line, the next target for uh, Ash Sutton is going to be Jack Goff. Sutton is now 13th, 
So he's worked his way from the back into the point. He's also working his way forward on that race two grid. Yeah, that's all important. He's building for race three, isn't he? That's the most important thing. You know, you can reverse your weekend. If you have a bad first race, you can turn it around um, with a bit of luck on the reverse grid, but you can turn it around and re rescue your points ball from the weekend. And he knows how to win championships. So, uh, Af Sutton, we've talked about his exciting driving style that sometimes gets him in strife. Wasn't his fault first time around, was it? That little bit of attack from Turkington. Another place game. Through goes Sutton on the inside of Jack Goff. That's the new Cooper. Four of them have been built by Team Hard over the winter. That's a Herculean effort. Uh, the car's still being developed. And now spots of rain look on the windscreen of Ash Sutton's Infinity. Yeah, I saw a couple of laps go on the camera, but I thought I'd just wait and see. And now it is visible on the camera. That's not real rain. Let's look at the fastest lap on this lap. Cook came across the line and did a 16.8, barely three tenths away from his fastest lap. So it's not affecting their lap times, but it's certainly a little bit of psychological rain to think about. We understand from Louise in the pits it's a transmission problem for Stephen Jelly that has put him uh, out of the race as they're over the timing line go Bordley and Sutton. So Ash up into 12th spot and he's not done yet. They've got the three Infinities running together. So Sutton certainly has the chance of making one further place before the end, maybe two. Lead gap, by the way, is two seconds as Cook continues to build that gap. And there is Hill versus Turkington. This is for third place and it has been this way really since the restart with Colin Turkington crawling all over the back of the Ford but never quite being able to find a way by. Yeah, Turkington sort of pretty much knows that this is going to be as far as he can get probably in this race. So he's just going to bide his time and wait for an opportunity. If it doesn't come, typical Turkington, he'll stay where he is, but there's no threat from behind and no chance really of getting any further forward. It's just between him and Jake Hill for this third place. Jake Hill in the MB Motorsport, accelerated by Blue Square, Ford Focus ST. Uh, Pete Osborne, Sam Osborne's father, having uh, bought Motorbase. Mark Blundell, of course, having also taken a, a big commitment to the team. Now, another good battle here is Tom Chilton versus Tom Oliphant. And these two squabbling for 14th and 15th places as they come down towards the chicane. Yeah, the two Sicily BMWs were actually brand new builds from West Surrey Racing. They weren't last year's cars passed over. They were two brand new cars, and uh, Sicily uh, Motorsport really impressed with the quality of the build and the, the feedback and the help that they've had from West Surrey Racing. Now they're down to racing, though. That that help might be a little bit less forthcoming, <laughs> um, but uh, certainly the uh, initial relationship got off to a flying start. Absolutely so. Right, there is Rory Butcher, still having to defend from Jason Plato, 6th and 7th, these two. Uh, Dan Robottom is behind them, he is 1.4 seconds back and lapping fractionally quicker as well. He's starting to creep into the mix, isn't he? I don't know whether he's going to get there before the end, but Robottom in the surviving uh, helpers racing with Cataclean Honda Civic is inching up onto the tail of these two. And you can see in the timing tower, Jason Plato's view then. Uh, the external shots on a slippery road now with the slippery surface flag shown is of Jason catching Butcher, but on board, you can see him now trying to get a toe heading up towards the chicane. Yeah, this, uh, this is a strong start for Plato. I'm sure he'll be pleased with this. Um, that car, although the Vauxhall is the oldest car on the grid, um, that shell is actually a brand new shell that was uh, the team had, so it's effectively a new car. Um, so uh, it, it brings a number of total new car builds to 12 on the grid. <laughs> Wouldn't have thought that was the oldest car. I mean, you forget how the championship moves on. It doesn't seem five minutes since the Astros arrived no. on the scene, does it? No. Strong race, I think, from Robo as well, from Dan Robottom. I think uh, he'll be pleased with this, his first race for the Dynamics team. And he hasn't got the wealth of experience of the car or racing to jump on the pace quite as quickly as some of the others, uh, given the lack of testing here and wet free yep. practice. So I think it's been a strong race for him. Yeah, absolutely, and he's another driver that uh, didn't do any racing last year, bar one event at Vallelunga in that Euro NASCAR uh, series, which almost ended in disaster. He got squeezed towards the pit wall, so he's been itching to get back into the championship, and he might just catch up to this battle before the very end. We are on lap 18 of 19, one to run then at the end of this. Butcher versus Plato. This is the fight, don't forget, for uh, sixth and seventh places. Robo in eighth, as I say, inching up closer and closer and closer. Now, Cook's advantage is back to just over two seconds as Jason Plato thinks about making a move down towards the chicane. Butcher hangs on to the advantage as they're onto the last lap. Then now goes Josh Cook, Tom Ingram behind him, 2.2 seconds. Even if it's not a win for Ingram and Hyundai, it's still uh, the best result that car will have had. So something to cheer about, absolutely. And, of course, it puts him on the front row of the grid 
for race two, but really good drive by Josh Cook here to start the season. Yeah, Foot starting off where he finished the last race here at Thruxton last year. He won the reverse grid race here, so that's uh, a consecutive race victories for him. Um, fastest lap, just a couple of tenths away from Tom Ingram's lap record that was a 16-2. Um, Cookie's done a 16-5, but he'll be really pleased with this first race. He's, you know, under a bit of pressure, I think it's fair to say, at BTC Racing to deliver the goods and lead the team. And with Kamish coming in this weekend as well, there was a bit of added pressure, but, you know, come with the hour, come with the man, and Cook has certainly delivered for the team so far. Absolutely right. So Josh Cook is set, it seems, to win this opening round of the championship from Tom Ingram. The fight for third is not done yet. But it is Josh Cook then, all the ingredients are there for Cook to deliver and success comes then in the opening round of the championship as he heads into the chicane, he rides the kerb through the left, through the right and now accelerates up towards the line. Round one of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship won by Josh Cook as he comes over the line to win from Tom Ingram, giving Accelerate its best ever finish. Jake Hill hangs on to third ahead of Colin Turkington, fourth, fifth, Dan Kamish and sixth is just going to be Butcher ahead of Plato and Robottom right with them at the end in eighth place and we're not done yet because the fight is on for ninth that is currently Adam Morgan versus Ash Sutton this battle pack is 12th and back but ahead of them Morgan gets ninth and Sutton 10th that's a really good recovery Carl Bordley comes over the line for 12th just behind Aidan Moffat so the Infinity is coming home 10 11 12 in the classification uh, behind them Chilton 14th 15th Oliphant Dan Lloyd 16th just missing out on the points but a really dramatic start to the season, and there Andy Neat will come over the line just ahead of rookie Rick Parfit, and that's 24th and 25th, nose to tail. Doesn't matter how far down the order you go, there were great battles raging on, but for Josh Cook, great job, and he'll be really pleased about that. Winning margin, 2.2 seconds. Yeah, just a looking at pace as an indicator. Uh, Cook had the fastest lap, Ingram the second fastest lap. Third fastest lap just by a whisker, but virtually matching Ingram was Sutton. So uh, just a little indicator of outright pace there. So Cook, Ingram, the front row provisionally for the second race. Ash Sutton will start on row five. So uh, he's already building, as we say, to uh, recovering the weekend via race three. But uh, now, of course, we have to factor in ballast. And ballast goes up this year, yeah. remember. Yeah. So we're back to 75 kilos um, for Josh Cook. That is a, a big amount of weight. That's nearly my weight, David. Really? Um, so, gosh. Yeah. gosh. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, that will make a significant difference, certainly, in race two. Uh, yes, it says in my handy guide to spontaneity, 75 kilos, Tim, no, surely not. Sorry, I wasn't quick <laughs> enough. Josh Cook, race winner in this opening round of the championship. And yes, 75 kilos that car will then have to carry into race two. 66 for second place. So Tom Ingram now has to cope with the uh, ballast as well. And for 10th placed, Ash Sutton, a mere nine. Yeah, so he'll still be very quick Absolutely. in race two. Yeah. Judging by the number of positions he made up and the fact that the, all the cars in front of him should now be slower than him based mm. on ballast. Look for a big charge from uh, from Sutton in race two. I mean, we're talking about race three, but factor in the weights, you know, race two could be a podium. Yeah, I mean, this will be the first time in a while we've seen that much ballast affecting mm. race mm. two. Again, everybody on the same tyre, so it's a good indicator of how much difference the ballast actually makes over a lap. We can compare lap times and pace. So, you know, expect an exciting race two. Right, so we've gone through the ride height check, which is always a nervous time. Uh, of course, Josh Cook lost a win at Alton Park last year when the car was uh, a nat too low on one side, but the officials go through the process here, and then the car will be released down to the Park Ferme area, and we'll uh, hopefully hear from Josh, from Tom Ingram, whose Hyundai is there in the background, and from Jake Hill. So uh, the top three drivers going through these technical checks. Be interesting to see what the officials think of that little touch from Turkington mm. on Sutton. Um, we know it was a first corner uh, coming together, you know, based on no dry reel running, and it certainly wasn't intentional. Um, Turkington was defending his second place from Cook, but, you know, will the officials look at it and see it in the same way? Because obviously the effect on Sutton was great. It was, yes. I mean, it's not a regular Turkington stunt, is it, to give somebody a tap and turn them around? But as you say, it's a cold day, cold tyres and it just looked as though he was struggling to get the car stopped and of course he was busy squabbling to try to defend from Josh Cook who made that move to get second place and within a split second as he saw his mate revolving took over the race lead and that's a great start to the season for Steve Dudman's BTC racing team. Kamish, Kamish comes up to congratulate yeah. him. 
It was good to see. So let's look at the results then of round one of the championship from Thruxton. It is Josh Cook who takes the race win ahead of Tom Ingram and then Jake Hill. Colin Turkington fourth from Dan Camish and Rory Butcher sixth. Seventh for Jason Plato ahead of Dan Robottom. His best ever finish in the championship, of course. Adam Morgan ninth and Ash Sutton recovers for tenth after a spin on the first lap. His teammates are eleventh and twelfth. Ada Moffat ahead of Carl Bordley. Jack Goff thirteenth. Points first time out for the new Cooper, therefore ahead of Tom Chilton and Tom Oliphant. Dan Lloyd sixteenth ahead of Sam Osborne and Aaron Taylor Smith. Ollie Jackson after a pit stop, 19th ahead of Jade Edwards. 21st, Jack Butel, Glyn Getty, 22nd, Sam Smelt, 23rd. And then it's Andy Neat ahead of Rick Parfit with Nicholas Hamilton a couple of laps down after uh, a pit stop. Stephen Jelly we lost with uh, mechanical dramas. Gordon Shedden and Chris Smiley we lost on lap one with plenty of damage. So as far as the championship is concerned, it is Josh Cook who leads ahead of Tom Ingram and Jake Hill. Colin Turkington fourth from Dan Camish, then Rory Butcher, Jason Plato, Dan Robottom, Adam Morgan, and Ash Sutton, who of course gets that point for pole position, hence he's level on points with Adam Morgan. Right, let's hear from race winner Josh Cook. He's with Louise. Josh, congratulations. There is no better way to start the season, is there? No, no, we'll take that. I'll say, um, yeah, it's a bit in the deep end, isn't it? Fastest circuit we go to in the UK. First one out of the year. Um, I was a bit of a shock to the system when the lights went out for that first time, but no, it's good. Uh, really, really tough for, for the whole of BTC. We've had a uh, obviously a pretty tough winter. You know, we've had a good start to the year. Just need to try and keep uh, keep uh, keep the ball rolling and see if we can do some more uh, some more damage this afternoon. You say a tough start. In what way? Just because uh, it's Struxton and it's a yeah. I mean, through winter winter testing, obviously, you know, we're changing a lot of things on the car. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it's going that smoothly, but I think uh, today we kind of showed that actually all our, all our hard work's kind of paid off. So, yeah, it's good to, to come out of the blocks with a, with a win and obviously a front row quality, but um, we need to be in this position at the end of the year. So, uh, yeah, just got to get our head down. Uh, but, you know, credit to, to Tom and the guys in the high end. They've really got that thing going quickly, so I had to push all the way. Um, Tom was on your tail and pushing yeah. you hard for a while, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, no, it, was, um, it wasn't an easy race, I was sure, but, um, yeah, just pleased with that. And fastest lap as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, as soon as uh, the safety car restart, I just had to try and get my head down and put some laps in, but the, the guys have got s uh, such a good uh, race car setup kind of beneath me that, you know, me driving's the easy bit. So, um, yeah, credit to the whole team. They deserve it. Congratulations to you as well. Cheers. Well done. And let's bring in uh, Tom standing well done, by. Well done, guys congratulating each other. And Tom, what a, what a great way for you to start uh, your new relationship with the, with the Accelerate team. Yeah, fantastic. Really, really pleased, actually. Really pleased to have got a, a podium on our debut. So, yeah, credit to, to, to all the guys and girls at Accelerate. Uh, they've done a, a, a tremendous job. So, yeah, to have got a podium on our, on our first race weekend, um, yeah, means the world. And it's so good to get to get a smile on the guys and girls' face. And, uh, and as I say, start what we mean to go on. You say it means the world, but how much is this going to mean to them? Because this is a, a kind of a, it's, it's an important season for you and for them as well. It really is ramping up, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and with having Spencer, who is my engineer uh, for years at Speedworks, having Spencer along with me has made such a difference as well. It's just meant that I've got that sort of continuity. I've got that, that comfort blanket in my ear, if you like, of, of knowing how we work. Spencer knows how to get the most out of me. I know how to get the best out of Spencer. And that just translates to all the guys that are working on the car as well. So, yeah, for a first race weekend, of course you could say you'd want the win. Of course you do. But for a first, uh, for our first race, I'm really, really happy. Well, and a great start for, for the next race as well. Could that win be coming? Well, I do hope so. Yeah, obviously we've got quite a lot of weight to throw into the car now, which is not something that, uh, that not actually something that we had last year. Obviously the weight has gone up this season, so that's going to play that's going to play a part in it. So that's going to make it. Um, yeah, lugging around, uh, lugging around some past is quite good fun, this one. <laughs> well done. Perfect. Well done. Then let's bring in our, uh, our third place finisher, Jake Hill. And Jake, you were, you were a tad grumpy when I spoke to you yesterday, containing it well, I say, but you were frustrated, shall we say, after qualifying. So does this result make up for it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's uh, a huge result for me, MB Motorsport and uh, uh, Motorbase. You know, it's been fantastic for all of us. So to come away uh, as first time manufacturer as well, to uh, come away with the podium at Bruxton. And finally, it's been good to me over the moon. And a lot of pressure in that race as well. I mean, you had Colin Turkington in your rearview mirrors for pretty much most of it, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, me and Colin had a good race. He, he was fair. I think I was fair, you know. I mean, yes, I got the elbows out with, with attacking him again, but we're fighting for a championship, Lou. What do you expect, you know? we've uh, When you're fighting Colin, you've got to try and finish in front of him as much as you can. So, um, yeah, fantastic result for everyone on board and absolutely thrilled.
Well done. Congratulations. Right, we are going to head off for a quick break now. Uh, I think it's Formula 4 when we come back, so make sure you're with us for that.